Good morning. Welcome everyone to Williams. Visitors, welcome. If you are visiting with us this morning, look to the end of your pew. There should be a little off-white, non-bleached, eggshell colored sheet of paper. Has a couple of questions on there. Um, if you could just fill those out and drop it in the offering plate in a few minutes, it'll come your way, just so we could have a record of your visit. Everyone else, open up your bulletins. Hopefully you have them open already, and you will see, and this will probably fall in your lap. Um, tonight, at starting at 6 o'clock, we will have committee meetings. So here's how it's going to go. It's not going to be long, drawn-out meetings. It's going to be about 15 minutes. And if you open up, you will see that there are specific times for specific uh, committees at specific places. So if your name is on this list anywhere, please try to be at your designated time to have a short little meeting just to come up with a chairperson and to plan for your next meeting that's pretty much what you'll be doing tonight so come tonight at six o'clock and make sure you find where you need to be um also know that you need to come back this wednesday for some good supper see there's the menu some chicken tenders and if you're not on the list call the office and get on the list for supper that will start at 5 30 on wednesday and then we'll have our usual activities bible studies at 6 30. and then one thing to keep in mind for next sunday um early bird mission trip meeting will be after the service next sunday morning so if you are interested in a, being a part of um, a possible mission trip this summer think about meeting with us next um sunday in the choir room right after the service and of course there are other things that you can read about front and back middle um so do that okay so now let's warm this place up with some love with some hugs and kisses and shaking of hands and some good mornings Good morning. Just one more quick thing. Um, this Tuesday evening uh, at 630, we, uh, the Crusaders um, are going to see Star Wars. And uh, we want to open that up to uh, anyone that has not seen it and would like to uh, go with us. We're going to be going over to Gadsden to that theater and the show that we're uh, going to see starts at 630. We wanted to give everybody time to get maybe home from work and um, you know join us over there so if y'all want to go on a um outing with the crusaders you're invited and um we'll all see star wars together thanks well, good morning uh gina i think didn't you tell me you're going to watch all the other star wars movies at your house before that no i'm just <laughs> i i didn't want to put you on this but no I was going to see what she's going to say. Okay. Um, <clears throat> well, it is good to see all of you here uh, this morning. I'm, I'm imagining uh, several of us are on the way back from uh, Texas. Uh, and so uh, JSU played a, a good hard game, and I know some of you were there. Thank you for being here <laughs> this morning. Uh, and just be praying for those who are traveling. And as we come together uh, on this Sunday morning, <clears throat> let us start our time together with a word of prayer. So let's pray together. Eternal God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the only one, Lord, worthy of our praise, worship, and admiration. Lord, as we have gathered in this room this morning, though the air outside may be cold, Lord, we know that your presence of love in this room gives us warmth. 
And God, as we have gathered, as we worship you and only you, may you free us, Lord, from the distractions that weigh us down. Free us, Lord, from frustrations of the weak, from, Lord, the, the fear of maybe something lying ahead of us, from whatever angst may exist between us and someone else, or whatever distractions there may be, ball games, work, life. Free us from them, Lord, that we may worship you in the ways that you call us to worship you. And, Lord, help us as we take those burdens back on to know that you take them with us. So, Lord, be with us in this time of worship. May our offering of praise and worship be pleasing unto you. We pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, at this time, as you see uh, there in your bulletin, we're going to be having a time of commissioning for our search committee for our new staff person. And over the past year, the personnel committee has been tasked with the process of guiding the congregation through a time of reflection and prayer as we have been looking towards the future and the staffing needs of our church. And during that time, the personnel committee issued a survey to all of you in order to get a feeling for what needs we might have and what areas we might be able to use another staff member, basically to sort of sure up assumptions they already had. After processing this information, the committee created a job description for a minister of music, families, and children. Once that description was approved by the congregation, the personnel committee then proceeded with the task of selecting a search committee for this new position. So at this time, I'm going to ask that the members of that committee come forward and stand before the congregation as I call your name. Jim Green, Heather Dempsey, Rhonda Duncan, Christy Shue, Jamie Freeman, Wallace Amarode, and Sean Ponder. And y'all ain't got to stand real close. We ain't going to take a picture. It's okay. <clears throat> Congregation, before you stands, those individuals selected by the personnel committee for the search and nomination of our future minister of music, families, and children. Their presence here this morning is a proposal for approval by the personnel committee, and it is also a time for you to commit to praying for and supporting them in the weeks and months ahead and the task that they have been assigned. So, all of those in favor of supporting this committee, please show your approval by saying amen. Now, church, if you commit to praying for them and the person God is leading to our church, please voice your commitment by saying amen. amen. And now to you, search committee. You are being commissioned with the task of bringing to the church a candidate for the position of minister of music, families, and children. This is not a task to take lightly, nor is it a task to be driven by preferences, fads, or whatever is easiest. This is a serious undertaking, and we, the congregation of the First Baptist Church of Williams, entrust you to this task. So search committee, if you commit to months of prayer, discernment, and working together for the good of the entire congregation, please voice your commitment by saying amen. And if you commit to regular communication with this congregation, cooperation with the church leadership, including the staff and pastor, and seeking the right person whom God is calling to journey with us in this next chapter of the First Baptist Church of Williams, please voice your commitment by saying amen. amen. Church, committee, today we have taken another step towards writing the next chapter of our church's story. Let us continue to pray for one another, for this committee, and the one whom Christ is calling to join us. Let us all join together in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, giver of the Holy Spirit, lover of us and this church, we ask your blessings on these who stand before us this morning, these whom we have commissioned with the task of finding our new minister. We pray, Lord, for a spirit of patience, cooperation, and unity, a spirit of joy as we move forward. 
We pray that you show us the one whom you are calling to join us in this journey of First Baptist Williams. And we ask, Lord, that we always seek first your kingdom in this and in all that we do. In the name of Christ our Lord, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the search committee, and I hope that in these days going forward you'll be praying for them, as I know they will be praying with one another and praying for this church and the one that God is calling to us. Thank you, committee, and thank you, church. Good morning. You will take your hymn, hymnal this morning and turn to 408. Have faith in God. Let's sing the first, second, and fourth. Please stand as we sing. Now turn over to 461. He leaves me, and we'll sing all three stanzas.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, that's good. Enough. Right, I want to ask you guys something. What's that window up there? Do you know what's behind it? Water. Water? Okay. What, you know what we call what's back there? There's not always water back there, but there is when we usually see, right? Do you know what we call that place back there? It's called the baptistry. Can you say that? Baptistry. Baptist. Right, yeah. We're called Baptists, but that's just a coincidence, really. A lot of churches have baptistries. And what do we do in a baptistry? Do you know? Do we take a bath Baptize in it? People. Baptize people. That's right, yeah. That's not that's where. Left it, it is. When I was a kid, I used to think that was where the preacher always took his bath. And, and so. Upstairs. Yeah, it's upstairs. That's how we get there, right? And we baptize people there. Do you know why we do that? I want to tell you. There, a long time ago, there was a guy named John the Baptist. Have you heard of John the Baptist? Yeah. Yeah, he was Jesus' cousin. And he was out in this river, and he was baptizing people. And they were coming from all over. I mean, there were all kinds of people. There were little people, big people, rich people, poor people, funny-looking people, strange-looking people. There were dirty people, clean people. They were all coming to get baptized by John. And, and you know what I always think about when I think about that? I think about a line. Do you all have to get in line at school? What's the place you want to be in in the line when you're in the line? You want to be the line leader? Oh, you want to go to lunch when you're in line? Yeah. Yeah, in the <laughs> middle. They go to the gym, right? Yeah, we get in lines. And that's how I always thought about it, was there's a line. And here are all those different kinds of people, right? They smell. Some of them look funny. Some of them probably kind of mean. But you know who else was in line? Do you know who else was in that line? Jesus. Jesus. The Bible tells us in, in Luke's gospel that when all the people had been baptized, guess who else would also ba was baptized? Jesus. Jesus was right there with all of those people. And that's one of the reasons why we do baptism, why we get baptized. When we become Christians, when we decide to follow Jesus, one of the very first things we do is one of the very first things he did, and we get baptized. And we do that just like everybody did then, and just like everybody has done since then, in different ways. Some people go in a big tub like that, and people like me get to dunk you under, and you get all wet. And then in some places, there's just a little bowl on a little pedestal, and they sprinkle it on your head. And some places, they take big cups, and they pick it up, and then they pour it over you like that. But that all means the same thing. It's a sign of following Jesus in that baptism, just like so many people did then and so many people still do, regardless of what they look like, what they smell like, what they act like. All those people came to be baptized, and Jesus was right there with them. So when we're baptized, guess who's right there with us? Jesus. Jesus. Oh, and Jesus is always <laughs> there with us. Here you go. Oh, yeah. Um, well, well, you got a question? Or not? This could I be went fun. to the monster jam. I heard. <laughs> I'm very jealous. Was Gravedigger there? <laughs> awesome. They cool. went around in donuts. Donuts. That's cool, man. Well, all right. well, even Gravedigger and the guy that drives it, guess what? He gets to be in line with the rest of us for baptism, okay? Well, I want to pray with you guys, and then Leo, we're going to talk more about Monster Jam, I hope. And, so, uh, and then we're going to go to Children's Church in threes and fours, okay? So let's pray together. God, I thank you so much for these kids and the way they make us laugh, the way they make us smile, the way they show us more of who you are, the way that your kingdom is, Lord, so easily received by children. Help us, God, to easily receive it as well. Uh, thank you again for these kids and pray you go with them to Children's Church and be with us the rest of this service. In Christ's name, amen. All right. Thanks, guys. Offshore hymn this morning is 505, Love Left to Me. We'll sing all three stanzas, the stanzas we sing.
Let's pray. Our Father, we come to you at this time just to stop and, and pause and consider the many, many blessings that you, through your grace, provide. We want to think thoughtfully and about giving back both with grateful hearts to your graciousness. Let us consider how we support the many ministries of your church and, and give accordingly. We ask that you continue to bless us throughout the remainder of the service. We ask these things in thy name. Amen. Wish I had a string bass up here playing with that. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. That's great. Please stand with the doxology.
Lord be with you. Uh, as you're turning in your Bible to the third chapter of Luke, I'm about like Sean. When Marilyn was playing the offertory, I thought a Baptist was about to dance in church. I thought, man, that, that'd like it jazzy. All right, that's good. That's good. Luke chapter 3, we'll be reading verses 15 through 22 this morning. Luke chapter 3, beginning with verse 15, reading through to verse 22. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water. One who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his, into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with an unquenchable fire. So with many other exhortations he proclaimed the good news to the people. But Herod, the ruler, who had been rebuked by him because of Herodias, his brother's wife, and because of all the evil things that Herod had done, added to them all by shutting up John in prison. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. May God add his blessing to the reading and hearing of Holy Scripture. Would you pray with me? Lord God, now we ask for ears to hear. Ears to hear your words and not mine. Eyes to see the way you blaze before us. Hearts open to receive what you have for us this morning. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. What's happened a few months ago, I was sitting at Roma's one day. You all know Roma's, right? Okay. Now, I don't remember if it was a Saturday morning breakfast or if it was... Hey, by the way, if you haven't been there for breakfast on Saturday morning, nice. It's good. It's healthy. It's really healthy. Um, weekday lunch, couldn't remember. And something happened that caused my heart to race a little bit, and it wasn't the grease on the food, I'm sure. Something caught my attention, and it made me kind of jump up from my chair a little bit. Driving around the square was a burgundy crew cab Chevy pickup with chrome tie-downs on the bed rails. Now, for those of you who don't know, I drive a burgundy crew cab Chevy pickup with chrome tie-downs on the bed rails. So for a split second, I thought someone had stole my truck. I saw it, and I jumped up to look, and, oh, and I realized, no, no, no one did. But you know something, ever since that day, I've noticed that same pickup. It seems everywhere. Maybe one of y'all drive it, I don't know. It's funny how that happens, isn't it? We're made momentarily aware of something, and then we can't help but, but seem to notice it all the time. We buy a new car, and what happens? Suddenly, everybody else has got the same car in the same color, or we buy a pair of shoes and suddenly we notice everybody else has the same fashion sense that we have. Or we hear a new word, a new song on the radio, and it's like everybody else has been using the word all of a sudden. Or every station is playing that song. Has that ever happened to you? Did you know there's actually a name for that? There's actually a name for the sudden awareness of things previously unnoticeable. It's called the Bader-Meinhof Phenomenon. And oddly enough, it actually gets its name from a West German terrorist group in the 1970s, the, the bader Mainhof clan. Because a commentator on this very phenomenon in the 1990s just happened to hear about that terrorist group twice in one day. He said, that's it, we're naming the phenomenon after them. I wish he had heard about, I don't know, Barney the Dinosaur twice that day. It's a kind of a real thing. The way we tend to notice things more frequently once we've initially encountered them. I thought about this phenomenon in light of what this Sunday is about. This is uh, the first Sunday after Epiphany in the traditional church calendar. It's the Sunday where we recognize and reflect on Christ's baptism as well as our own. And I thought about the ways in which after I was first baptized, I began to notice these people 
These people all around me who were baptized just like I had been baptized. Those people who claimed the name of Christ. Now, I mean, it was easy to notice the people who occupied the same church space, the people who sat in the same pews as I did. But out and about, out there in the world, I began to take notice of folks who wore WWJD bracelets, those people with Jesus fish on their cars, those people who would say certain words or phrases that I had only heard other people in church say. And it felt like all of a sudden, there were believers, Christian people, all around me. And for the most part, that was awesome. That was great. I mean, I found out that Bono, the lead singer of the Irish rock band U2, was a Christian. Is there something flashing behind me? <laughs> Pay no attention. <laughs> that ain't what this is about. Just close your eyes. You ain't got to look at me anyway. See, don't go to sleep. Close your eyes. When I was baptized, it was amazing how I found out who all these people were Christians. I found out that, that Bono, the lead singer of U2, one of the most popular bands in the world, was a Christian. I mean, how cool is that? The most famous rock star in the world had been baptized like me, though it might have been in a different manner because he's Catholic. But it still counts, right? I learned that my assistant principal from high school, a man who encouraged me and treated me like his son, like a kid with potential, was a Christian. Though to be fair, it's likely most of the faculty and staff at my high school were Christians because, after all, I was raised in the Deep South, right where the buckle on the Bible belt comes together. It seemed like there were all these others all around me who were baptized, who were believers in Christ. There was the teller at the bank, the barber who had cut my hair for years, the cashier at the Winn-Dixie, the woman who worked in the, in the food service department at the service center where I worked, the waiter at the Mexican restaurant. They were baptized folks everywhere. And now all of a sudden, I noticed them as if they had never been there before. I have to tell you, though, it, it didn't surprise me a whole lot. After all, most of these people struck me right away as, as what we might call good Christian people. And you can ask my wife. I have sort of an, uh, uh, it makes my skin crawl when I hear good Christian people. As if they were bad Christian people. Well, they probably are, but you know what I'm saying. They struck me as these kind of folks. They were nice. They were clean. They kept their shirts tucked in. They didn't cuss, drink, smoke, or chew, or run around with folks that do. They, didn't, they, they spoke in Christianese. They said things like, I'll pray for you, God bless you, if God brings you to it, God will bring you through it. They'd say things like, well, if it's God's will. They were sweet people, people with tags on their cars that said, God is my co-pilot, with prints of the Last Supper hanging over their dining room tables and footprint posters over the toilet in the bathroom. There were folks that said silent prayers over their Big Macs at McDonald's, folks with pocketbooks engraved with the 23rd Psalm, and pins in their shirt pockets with pictures of eagles and the words of Isaiah printed on them. No, it didn't surprise me a whole lot at all when I noticed these folks had been baptized just like I was. And to tell you the truth, I was proud to be like them. I was proud to share that baptismal bond with those kinds of folks. But then, then I noticed that there were others who had been through the same kinds of waters than I had. I'll be honest with you, it made me uneasy. There was Ned, one of the mechanics that worked in the same shop I did. Ned cussed and complained about everything. I mean everything. He threw stuff. He cussed. He hollered. He shouted. And then you can imagine my surprise when I ran into Ned at our Baptist Association's ministers and deacons retreat. Chairman of deacons at his church. Took me a minute or two to process it. Then there was Lindsay, a girl I had gone to high school with. And I'll just say this, Lindsay in high school was popular. You figure out what it means. And so it shocked me when I found out that she too had been baptized, just like me, even before I knew her in high school. There was Tony, a guy I had known for years, a guy who smoked since we were 14, who wore torn tank tops, had baggy pants, and his wallet was always on a long chain. The last guy I would have thought to have been a baptized brother. 
There was Eric, the shaggy-haired redneck, who thought it a point of pride to drink himself to sleep at night. Even he had been through the water. There were all sorts of people who surprised me and made me more than a bit uncomfortable when I find out that they too had been through the waters of baptism because they didn't come across to me as good Christian people. They weren't really all that nice. A bunch of them smelled like Newports, Michelob, and body odor. They didn't dress or speak real well. A few of them complained or sought to pick fights over any small thing that didn't go their way. Some of them were downright mean. They told dirty jokes, didn't pray over their food at lunch or put money in the red kettle at Christmas. A few of them were ignorant and racist. They didn't always smile at people or say, God bless you, or drive around in their cars with Bible verses on bumper stickers. They listened to the wrong kind of music, dipped Kodiak and spit it on the carpet. They drank beer in the middle of the week, were divorced three times, they ran stop signs, whistled at women, bounced checks, wore too much makeup, had tattoos and lip rings, lived with their boyfriends and girlfriends. They did things that good Christian people weren't supposed to do. But still, they had been called by Christ, and they had followed him through the waters of baptism one way or another. And maybe they weren't living life the way I thought they should. And maybe they weren't the shining examples of what many of us sitting, would want sitting on our pew on Sunday. But they had been through the same waters I had. Through the same water that Jesus himself had. All four of the Gospels tell us about Jesus' baptism. But Luke seems least interested in the details. The rest of them say, oh, he went down and there was an exchange between him and John and this happened. No, you know what? Luke only gives half a verse. First half of verse 21. Now when all the people were baptized and when Jesus also had been baptized. First time I ever noticed that was when I heard Fred Craddock mention it in a chapel sermon at Truett. He said, that's no way to talk about baptism. There's no drama to it at all. There's nothing that magical, nothing wonderful or attention-getting that happens. All the people have been baptized. Jesus also was baptized. It's like Jesus is standing in line. To which Craddock said, I hate lines. But there's Jesus in line. Seemingly at the end of the line. In fact, when all the people were baptized, Jesus also had been baptized. You know, I can't help but wonder who Jesus saw go down in the water with John before it was his turn. I'm sure there were those good Jewish people. The ones who showed up early every Sabbath at the synagogue. The ones who read their Torah and even had whole passages memorized. I'm sure there were those clean-cut guys who held the door for ladies. Those young folks that said, yes, ma'am, and yes, sir. Why, I bet there were all kinds of good folks waiting to be baptized by John. I mean, Jesus is in line with them, right? So, of course, the good people have to be there. Of course, there were some less, well, less savory people waiting in line for baptism. We heard from some of them not too many weeks ago in the verses prior to this text before us. There were folks among them that were so bad, right, that John, what does he call them? You brood of vipers. I mean, he saw them coming. There were tax collectors. There were soldiers, men and women, rich and poor, clergy and laity, all kinds of folks standing in that line waiting to be dunked down in the water by John. And who's in line with them? Jesus. You know, I'm sure if I had been standing in that line, I'd have been taking notes on the kind of folks standing in that line with me. I don't think I'd have said a whole lot when I saw the religious folks getting in line. I mean, after all, this is, this is what they're doing, right? This is a religious thing. I wouldn't have said a whole lot. I, I may have even said, okay, they're here. I'm in the right place. After all, even the most hypocritical church person at least knows how to present him or herself in public, right? No, I don't think I'd have said too much about standing in line with religious folks. And to tell the truth, I probably wouldn't have thought too much about standing in line with the non-religious folks, the heathens. 
After all, that's where they're supposed to be, right? In line with the church folks, being transformed to look more and more like those church folks. I don't think I'd have thought too much about it. I suppose I'd hope they'd come out of the water more like me, more like the good folks, a smile on their face, tucking their shirts in and combing their hair as they came out of the water. I don't suppose it would have bothered me to see soldiers in line either. They may have been there as a sign of force, a sign of intimidation, but if they got in line, well, good. They're going to be turned into folks just like me too. But if I'm honest, I may have flinched a little bit when the tax collectors got in line. I mean, they were traitors. That's what they were seen as, traitors to their own people. Jews hired by the Romans to collect taxes from their brothers and sisters, raising rates just a little bit if they wanted to eat a bite, to get ahead in this world. But I probably would have asked myself, are they any worse than me, really? They're just doing their job. Everybody's got to make a living somehow, right? If I had been in line, taking an inventory of all those folks standing in line with me, I'm sure I would have gone right on standing there. That is, until I noticed them getting in line. You know who they are, don't you? They might be different depending on who you are, but we've all got them don't we? They strolled up and got in line. I believe I'd step right out and go home. I'm not going to be associated with that bunch of fools. I'm not going to be seen standing around with them people. It doesn't matter who they are. They're the folks you just can't tolerate. The ones who really get under your skin. The ones you'd rather see go on somewhere else. The ones you think are wrong and there's no change in your mind about it. They're the ones who refuse to follow our rules, who refuse to come around to our way of thinking, the ones who, let's be honest, just aren't as good as us. They're the ones who we all know aren't really going to stick it out, who won't change, who won't try to fit in with the rest of us, who won't come out of the water trying to be better. They're the really messed up people, the kinds of folks we'll take up an offering for or hand out Bibles to, but not really the kind of folks we want to stand in line with. Now, if there was another line, I'd stand in that one. I mean, after all, that's the way to do it, right? All the saved folks over here and all the unsaved folks over here. All the clean folks over here, all the dirty folks over here. All the rich ones here, the poor ones here, the smart ones here, the dumb ones here. That's what we're doing. Check the box and get in the right line. But there's just one line. To stand in line, the same line with them, I... I don't want to be seen with their type, so I'll step out. But when all the people were baptized, Jesus also had been baptized. That's just not really a good way to say it, is it? Jesus should have had a private baptism, right? I mean, John should have said, all right, Jesus, you go stand over there, and when I get done with everybody else, I'm going to make sure they all know, and we're going to have a special one just for you. But that's not what happened. I mean, it sounds like Jesus stood in line with all of those people, like the Son of God waited his turn, waited in line with the hypocrites, the sinners, the fakes, the phonies, the traitors, the bullies, the rich, the poor, the unkempt, the punks, the degenerates, the lazy, the addicted. He waited in line with them knowing their deepest hurts, their real flaws, their most secret sins. And when all of those people were baptized, Jesus also was baptized. Jesus went through the same water, the same baptism, as all of those who stood in line at the Jordan. Not because Jesus was a sinner himself. Not because he needed to repent of anything. Not because he was anything less than God's son, God incarnate. Jesus went through the same waters of baptism as all of those folks in line, as the same waters as me and as you, as Bono, as Ned, as Billy Graham, or any of those people sitting in this room or in your life that you just can't stand who've been there too. Jesus went through the same water to show us all the revolutionary, upside-down reality of his kingdom. That there isn't a single soul who isn't welcome to stand in line. 
There isn't a single soul better than another. I've tried, y'all. I'm going to tell you, I've tried to find somebody in this world that I am better than. And just when I think I've found them, you know what? They proved me wrong. God proves me wrong every single time. Jesus went through the same water. To show us this revolutionary, upside-down reality of a kingdom. That there isn't anybody who's better than us. There isn't a single line of separation that I can draw that God won't erase. So when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized, Christ stood in line with all the people. Sinners and saints. And friends, if we're not willing to stand in line, if we think we know better than Jesus, if we think there are those who cannot stand in line with us without becoming like us, well, I'm afraid we're going to be disappointed when we stand in a different line, in the fullness of God's kingdom. So if we're not willing to get in line, even if it's to be last in line. I'm afraid we just might not get in. Would you pray with me? Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, the one who shows his love for us by dwelling here with us, taking on flesh to show us the depth, the unfathomable depth of God's love. To show us, Lord, that there is no one who we are better than and that you are far greater than we can ever imagine. Help us, Lord, to see who you call us to be. Help us, God, to see those around us with your eyes was worthy, Lord, of our time, our attention, our love. God, help us. Give us your, your strength. Give us your strength to love those we think are unlovable, to stand with those we would rather walk away from. God, give us your Holy Spirit and empower us to do just that, to see this reality of your kingdom. It's one that goes against everything we think we are because it's everything of who you are. Holy Spirit, move in this place now. In our hearts, Lord, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Invitation hymn this morning is uh, 366, I Surrender All. Please stand as we sing.
Lord Jesus, go with us from this place. Empower us by your Holy Spirit to be, Lord, proclaimers of the good news of your love for all of us. It's in your name we pray. Amen.